Where should you farm? One of the hardest questions to answer in Dota 2, and the answer isn't always obvious. While it's pretty straightforward during the laning phase, this question becomes the backbone to winning the mid game and making a smooth transition into the late game. Welcome everybody, my name is Navitz, representing my esports team, the Sploosh Troop, and today this video is brought to you on behalf of Gamers Class. If you like this kind of content, go to gamersclass.com. For just $10 a month, get your replays analyzed, watch masterclasses with pro players, join weekly coaching sessions, win prizes, and more with our Supreme Dota 2 membership. Alright, so where you should farm is a very complicated question to answer and there's not always one right answer. Sometimes there's more than one, but usually it'll go by a few different concepts. So we're going to discuss those by looking at the replays and looking at some scenarios and then kind of discussing exactly why certain people farm certain areas and why everyone's going where they're going uh, at a particular time in which areas of the map they're moving into where they feel safe where their hard carry is what their off laner is doing what their mid laner is doing and things like that so we're going to look at this example to start things off and we have a nature's prophet who's farming it's a, also we're at we're at 12 minutes and 18 seconds into this game i took the uh, quincy crew versus cra uh, crazy series to demonstrate some examples on and what we're going to see we're going to look at our mini map here so we see that nature's prophet is right here with our um morphling farming the ancient camps it's 12 minutes 18 seconds and the wave up here is pushed pretty far now at bottom wave what we see is juggernaut is spinning on this wave and if we look at our wards and our vision we have vision right here and we have a tiny right here giving us vision of this jungle uh what do we see in terms of the enemy let's take a look a witch doctor an invoker and a jug bottom which means that there's a missing beast master somewhere and that there is also a missing disruptor somewhere now who's going to farm this bottom wave is it going to be morphling or is it going to be nature's prophet well in this instance let's take a look and see what happens and then we'll talk about it a little bit so we see our nature's prophet is immediately teeping down to this bottom wave now let's discuss why this was nature's profit and not morphling the reason for it the reason for nature's profit opting to come down here is because the lane is dangerous if nature's profit dies it wouldn't be great for his team he probably won't die in fact they have enough vision right now to see that he won't die um but somebody does need to push this lane out especially when it's at their tower when it when a lane is at your tower like this it means you need to push it out like somebody's got to come deal with this you shouldn't be looking to set up a gank at a point or a team fight unless the person pushing this lane which is nature's profit by coincidence actually can teleport into the fight or use some kind of global ultimate like specter can haunt um you can get contributions from invoker with sunstrike or zeus with ulti things like that but in in general you want the person who's pushing this you want somebody to be pushing this lane out because it'll give you more map control and what i mean by map control is if we look at our mini map right here this area all down here from here whoops from here to like up here is pretty unsafe for the radiant squad right now so th this the fact that their tier one tower is gone makes this area unsafe it makes this unsafe it makes this unsafe their only saving grace is the fact that they have a ward right here and that does give them very good vision which makes it okay uh for somebody else to potentially farm it but in this case we do want to have our nature's profit push this out all right moving just a few seconds forward let's look and ask why morphling wasn't the one to push out this wave down here the answer for that is because he has a much safer time farming in this jungle over here so morphling took these ancient camps this thing was gone already when we looked and then he walked up here he walked this way and now he's ending up kind of over here at the moment and the reason he wants to be here as opposed to down in this lane is because well at the mo at this moment this is the dead lane so he doesn't want to be there because it means it's dangerous there's not a lot to gain by being down there and because he can farm up to this wave right now so this is an important concept he can pretty safely farm up to this wave if they don't engage in a fight which is actually happening but uh, if they weren't engaging in the fight if they were just kind of like posturing up and nobody went on anybody morphling could push one wave out farm this farm this farm this and then walk back and farm this safely farm ancients safely probably stack ancients and then farm them uh 
by the time it's 14 minutes so you have to think what point in the game what what, what minute what, what point in the minute timer we're at in the game if we're at let's say 1330 that might change a little bit but because we just hit 13 we know our camps respawned so he has the potential of maybe even aggressively really aggressively pushing this lane although i wouldn't recommend it if you're a hero with uh with uh a, an easy escape tactic like juggernaut and there's no bkb piercing stuns you could spin on that wave and just tp out that would get your lane continuing to push you would be able to tp safely back to your ancients and farm and you would really really be able to pressure the map uh, against the radiant squad the radiant squad or sorry the dire squad the dire squad would have to react to this tower if you did that as juggernaut that's just a hypothetical but this is why yawar didn't or morphling didn't want to come to this bottom lane it's also because he wouldn't be able to participate in this team fight which he's about to do right now he'll show up to this team fight they'll participate and they'll try to make something happen but the important thing to understand is the safer area for him to be it was in his own triangle that's where he wants to be he doesn't want to be in the in the um in the dead lane and there's also ancients there this is another big thing to consider the fact that ancients are right here means this is where he did want to farm at that time and if they weren't fighting right now he would want to head back towards that ancient camp uh, while farming these camps uh, while farming these camps and then moving on back this way or if they had lost this fight that's probably what he would do okay same game new scenario we're looking at this from the opposite perspective and I actually really like this because uh, I did want to point this out I think Jug is a really good example of being able to check out where you can farm uh, aggressively while you have a good escape mechanism and Jug's escape mechanism is his spin and teleportation so we've got a jug that's participating in a team fight right here the team fight is just ending it's not what's important we see the healing ward is down right now and we're gonna watch jug's farming pattern real quick so let's see where he decides to go their team actually just smoked up and let's see what jug decides to do we had just saw the tail end of this here so let's see where he's going notice that he skipped the camp by the way oh also i, I also noticed that he's paying attention to the to the map but notice that he skipped this small camp the small camp's not that important neither is this camp but he skips the camp to go directly to the wave why there's a catapult here and also pushing the wave is better than taking a small camp it forces the other team to react down here as we had just seen but let's continue and see jug's farming pattern a little bit longer so we'll keep our eyes on him and we'll speed it up a bit spins on the wave and then comes up here once he spins on the wave it's still pushing and he's gonna spin on it one more time and there is the reaction so he pushes this wave he doesn't want to be here this is also like really really important to note he doesn't want to be there for very long so he's spinning on it at the second that he gets there so he has a chance to clear the wave and get away so now that he's cleared the wave he's gonna back up here but why isn't juggernaut farming this part of the map right here this camp this camp this camp uh let's take a let, let's take a oh, no we got we got pretty good vision uh, the reason he's not farming there is because this forces a reaction from the radiant side they have to come down here every time he pushes this wave it forces them back and he's occupying their jungle while juggernauts down here it means that they can't be here so they can't be farming this camp they can't be farming this camp and they can't be farming this camp juggernaut can be uh, unfortunately this camp i believe is blocked so that's just the thing but still it means that the the radiant side can't farm where he can why is it that juggernaut's here and not someone else okay it could hypothetically be a beastmaster but some stuff happened in beastmaster tp top and then he wasn't able to be in the fight so it could have been beastmaster as well but typically you want your strongest hero down here in this situation or at least a hero that won't die if they try to gank him so juggernaut can play down here and not get ganked if they gank him he just spins and tps out or he has a bunch of escape he has other escape mechanisms he's just farming up to his battle fury that's all he cares about so now he knows what the timer is he knows he wants to push out one more wave he doesn't want to fight the nature's prophet he just wants to push out the wave he's gonna come up here see if he can get in oh and this is that fight that we were just seeing so we saw that fight breaking out he was paying attention pushes one more wave and then decides it's time to show up to the team fight that's a pretty good decision considering the fact that two of his heroes 
Uh, or, well, I mean, two of his teammates died. I don't know if it was worth throughout that TP, but it's a good decision to show up to this kind of five on five team fight when you have Omni Slash and Spin and your full health and full mana. You can be a big, pretty big contribution. Sitting here and attacking this tower, probably not the greatest thing. You're not going to get it. Uh, they might glyph it. They could just fortify it and get rid of your wave. Uh, so you're not going to do a lot compared to what you could do coming to this fight. So seeing the way Jug played this was really interesting. He put pressure on the bottom part of the map forcing the team to react to it, and he knew that he was safe. It could have also been Beastmaster, though. All right, now we're going to look at this from two perspectives. We're going to see the Juggernaut with the Aegis, and we're going to watch what the Nature's Prophet's doing. So Nature's Prophet's bottom, the Juggernaut's got his Aegis, and we're also going to make a very important note right here. This is for the lower level players who, who don't seem to understand this. Look back here. The It's 2336. This camp hasn't been farmed. This camp hasn't been farmed. Hasn't been farmed. Hasn't been farmed. Uh, this one happened to have been farmed. But anyways, none of these players, the Beastmaster is not back here farming camps. The Invoker, not back here farming camps. They're not farming their Ancients. They're not trying to maximize the amount of gold that they have right now. What they're doing is putting pressure on the map and forcing these waves in while the enemy team is constricted to the map. So if they were back here, it would be more dangerous for the Juggernaut to do this. In fact, he couldn't do this alone. So they're sitting behind Juggernaut while he pushes this tower. And that's a very smart move. They want to sit behind him. They're not grouped up together. They have vision on this ward right here. So they have a lot of vision and they know they can take this tower at the same time. The only safe place for Morphling right now is basically this bottom portion of the map right here. That's the only place he can safely farm because they have a ward right here that gives him vision. Uh, they can't step out over here really. They can't go to this top part of the map. So essentially at this point, the rate or the dire side is controlling three fourths of the map. They've got this whole jungle here. So if we think about it, this whole jungle, they've got their top jungle, which they're not taking at the moment because they're prioritizing an objective. They've got their whole area here and, uh, and, and that's it. That's, that's, that's three fourths of the map, but let's see what nature's profit does at the moment. So nature's profit is going to be pushing this bottom tower. And instead of just showing right here, right away, nature's profit waits a second and then comes in when she sees the, the other, when he sees the other heroes takes the tower and backs up here but we do have a teleportation coming from the juggernaut now why does juggernaut tp here the reason is because he still has aegis it's kind of dangerous to just tp here they so juggernaut still has aegis let's take a look at fog of war for the juggernaut so for the dire side and play Uh, so juggernaut has aegis and he's the only one that can be down here that, that can be down here relatively safely at the moment if if he gets gone on juggernaut can spin spin away and he knows that his invoker has a tp and his beast master has a tp now i'm not sure if they communicated that like verbally but he probably knows because he's paying attention to where they're going on the map since he's so high level however if you want to make sure your team knows you have to communicate that in the game like you're probably not a 10k all-star that can figure something like that out so jug comes to this lane to push it out they're pinging on the map this is where they want to be and they just got some vision of tiny so this is exactly what i was talking about what's going to happen the Aegis expires. Ooh, nice. This is going to get interesting. The Aegis expires, but he's just going to spin and back up, and the rest of his team is going to react. Now, this is a pretty okay fight for them. Which way it's going to go, I don't really know. We're going to watch it. We're, we're going to watch it play out. But Juggernaut was really the only person that could safely push out that wave. And now he starts with an Omni Slash, and the chase is on. If, if Kezu here manages to get a roar, that's going to be another kill. And a lot of this is because Juggernaut came here to farm this lane and push it out. They tried to make a play on the Juggernaut. Juggernaut's not really the hero to make the play on. They thought they could get him as soon as his Aegis expired. He spun. They don't have anything to stop it. And he was okay. I thought. I think maybe they were hoping to get the, uh, the Orchid off on Jug to stop him from being able to spin. But he's got a Manta too, so it doesn't really matter. He would have been able to spin regardless. Um, that was a nice play. And you just saw like some pretty interesting ideas about the map so first idea was his team one not farming back here second idea was pushing the wave pushing the wave here and taking the tower 
the third idea was the enemy team's nature's profit counter pushing this tower although they're not able to get a tier two the best thing they can do is at least get a tier one they're not able to win this team fight here they're not able to stop them with the ages so they take the next best thing and the morphling the fourth thing to notice is that the morphling only had this small area of the map to work with right here so these camps were available for the morphling basically they they really stymied the map for the radiant side so this is going to be a quick note on how to push the wave when you're feeling in insecure no <laughs> when you're not feeling safe uh and we're just going to see what our juggernaut does real quick it's a pretty simple concept most of you understand it but he basically just pops his manta illusion and uses his manta to push this wave if we take a look at what his team has vision of on the map right now all they know is that their lanes are uh pushed in pretty well this top lane is all the way up here this lane is right here and he's got kind of vision let's see from the dire side for one second so he's got vision right now just of the nature's profit which is why he doesn't want to show here bottom especially because he knows where his invoker is understanding the positioning of your teammates is very important so you can do this with um illusion based heroes very easily or any heroes that have mantas or heroes with summon units you push it out with your summon units and send your main hero back to the waves to farm or the camps to farm and that's exactly what he's going to do now since nature's prof nature profit showed up down here he's just going to wait back here he's not going to go forward and catch this wave until the nature's profit's kind of gone and he's feeling pretty safe now that he's feeling safe he's got one wave pushed and based on what he sees on the map maybe he'll try to push another wave maybe not nope decides it's time to push it again with my illusions and then he tps out so that's the idea of pushing safely with illusions or other types of units that can do so uh which would which would be like your tempest doubles your your uh creeps uh maybe chen creeps uh nature's profits trance stuff like that you push with those and send your hero to a safe place and he is taking his safe farm back here he's going to go into the ancient area uh, and then his team's probably going to look to get roshan yeah actually they're waiting for roshan right now so his team's going to get the next roshan after that and that's a cool way to play especially when you have control of this map with such deep wards you take the the safest farm that you can then you try to efficiently farm while waiting for roche to be up and their whole map while we were talking about this earlier earlier quincy crew's map has been pretty limited you can see they have a pretty big disadvantage in terms of net worth even though it's 15-5 they've lost more team fights but they've just been restricted on the map based on um based on the dire team maintaining their advantage they've maintained the lead and had more control of the map for a longer period of the game now some heroes leave lane very early especially if the lane is difficult we're looking here at a terror blade who's level five and he has lost lane well not lost lane i guess he did give up first blood but he's still doing pretty okay in terms of net worth i'm pretty sure yeah, he's all right he, he's doing fine he's fine in terms of net worth it's uh about six minutes in he left the lane he just got level six but he left at level five why did he leave at level five instead of laning this is a thing that i've talked about before first off he's got a tree in his lane so his tree can defend this tower for as long as possible heal it up with living armor which is a nice strategy second is because he's up against a veno and a marana in the off lane and as you guys know veno is one of the stronger heroes if you watch my off lane veno guide you'll know that that hero is terrible to play against and he won't farm as efficiently there's a couple stacks here for him he's just taking his second stack now we're gonna see the farming pattern of this terror blade the only reason for him next to make the decision of going top instead of farming this camp this camp and then going bottom would be if he thinks he can get a kill which we're going to see in a second he's going to think that he can get a kill on the venomancer and we'll see that play out and i'll put fog of war for the dire only so we can see just the dog the dire's fog of war right now and he's going to head back top um in a second he knows where that veno is and he has his metamorphosis up again so we're going to see the play try to get made there's the ulti Benno ultis as well he gets some farm there gets the kill and now he's forced to teleport back to base so going back to base let's see where he looks on the map next to go and he's gonna go towards the ancient camp uh and that's the most obvious area for him and we're gonna see him do something really cool which uh is going to make me want to watch actually a little bit more of this this segment so 
the, the thing that we're going to see that's interesting is he farms these camps here. He sends an illusion to the mid lane. And right now, he's going to stack this at the 10-minute mark while getting the bounty ruin. Come back. And now he's going to push this wave. He's going to go push the small camp and farm a couple other waves around the map before he has his meta up again once his meta is up again he's going to easily be able to go take that double stack and that's going to maximize his farm also notice that he is paying attention to every minute it's very important let's see his net worth right now his net worth is going up at a very good rate he's going to farm these camps one more time and he's not going to hesitate to pop metamorphosis to farm this is a really big concept that i stressed a lot in the past don't be scared to use meta or your ultimate. Like if you're a CK, you can use Phantasm to farm. If you're a Terrorblade, you can use Metamorphosis to farm, especially if it's an Ancient Camp. And he does it at such a good time that there's going to be another Ancient Camp spawning right now. So he essentially gets three Ancient Camps within like a minute and 10 seconds. And that's just so good in terms of net worth. It's something that Terrorblade's able to do, but somebody like Faceless Void would not be able to do, even with a Mask of Madness. So Terrorblade is now starting to catch up or maybe, yeah, he's taking the lead over faceless void in terms of farm he's got a little bit of a lead and experience and that was his farming pattern from his being level five all the way up to level nine you can see that whole period of time it was about five minutes he basically played he went from he walked from the top lane he started up here he just walked this way farmed this camp farmed here farmed the stack here farmed the stack here went back here farmed one more time killed the veno teleported to base because he got altied and then went towards these ancients and efficiently farmed them so that was a very nice uh farming pattern that you saw you see you know that he took the safe farm and while all that was happening venomancer did to manage to take the top tower he's they they basically sacrificed that top tower which i have another video about if you want to find that it's on my youtube channel but um they sacrificed the top tower in and what they traded for for that top tower was way more farm for this terribly what we're looking at now is some really dangerous farm to take you see there's a team fight breaking out mid they're trying to take this mid tower faceless void has a wave that's pushing into this tower and we're going to see how this plays out basically faceless void has the marana behind him and he has some escape me mechanisms but now that the mid tower is gone this is a dangerous spot for him to be farming. If I take a look at the fog of war from his side only, they don't know exactly where the rest of the team is. All they know is where the Lycan is, but they don't know where the void spirit is or where the Treant is at this moment. And Treant's especially dangerous because Treant could teleport behind this tower, walk around the trees and use his ulti to root void. So this is a very dangerous wave to farm sometimes in these instances you'll even see a really really high level players take one or one creep maybe two creeps and just time walk out before anybody shows up but we see here he takes the creeps he's taking them all and there is quinn quinn shows up gets him with the astral spirit but he does have time walk faceless void is a pretty good hero to escape well he's an okay hero to escape because he's got the time walk to obviously remove the last two seconds of damage and to help him escape and in addition to that he had the marana behind him so all i wanted to point out here was how dangerous this wave was to take we see void is pushing a wave while his mid tower is being taken in a fight that he couldn't be a part of they they don't have chronosphere available they weren't able to defend the mid tower he recognized that so what he did was push the wave and then come farm or he pushed the wave farm the camp and then tried to back up but quinn did try to make a play on him now maybe this could have been a death uh against faceless if he was a little bit more careless or if the other team had other other heroes had rotated there's potential for them to have been able to kill faceless but sometimes as the strongest hero in the game you need to be the one who's aggressive i would have liked him see to see him like tp out just a second earlier but not tp out to time walk away a few seconds earlier not take that whole creep wave because it was a really dangerous creep wave to take still though they're going to be able to get out of this if we uh if we speed up a bit they might lose the marana do they yeah they lose the marana but the rest of it is a team fight that breaks down. They might be able to turn it, actually. Yeah, they turn it. They get a, they get a trade. So it's not too bad. But that was uh, that was the little farming expedition from Void and the, the very, very dangerous farm he took after the Tier 1 tower uh, fell.
So right now we have some really good examples of a farming pattern coming out from Faceless Void who will also um, just so happen to, to do something wrong and we'll talk about what that is when it's about to happen. So he doesn't have a teleportation and he doesn't have chrono. We see him clicking around. His farming pattern has been going if you're looking at the minimap he's farmed his whole bottom jungle and made it over to this wave here which Terrorblade is pushing out with illusions. Now he sees the team fight breaking out mid and he knows that it's not safe or that he can't go there not that it's not safe he can't be there he doesn't have a tp he doesn't have chrono so what's he gonna do instead first off his tp is up in five seconds he's not even thinking about going top because he doesn't that that might not be a safe area and that is a logical area for the enemy team to go towards next they're either going to try to take mid which they're doing or take top or or take mid and top which they might take both of right now so what's he going to do instead he's going to farm the enemy ancients and i like this move and this is something that you don't see enough of especially in lower level especially in lower level games uh, he's farming the enemy ancients instead of going back towards his bottom jungle this is the better farm to take you take something away from the enemy team and if they come here it it means that they're not able to get objectives so if they were to come here which is unlikely um he might still be able to get away probably not but they wouldn't be able to get mid and top if they did come to kill him here at this moment at this moment but let's see how this plays out so we're gonna watch where void goes to farm next and we're, we'll keep it on his perspective so we see the fog of war from his eyes and he's gonna come down here and farm this bottom wave now this wave was safe to farm and look he's turning around and he thought about it he thought about leaving but he's going to get greedy and this greed is actually going to cost him his life and the reason for that is he doesn't see where the the void spirit is which is the only player on the map that can catch him uh with that that can catch him uh or, not the only actually he, there's a rubik and there's also a treant rubik can lift him treant can can uh can in, entangling roots what's it called overgrowth using uh, overgrowth on him and uh quincy or, or void spirit can do quite a bit of damage and also use the aether remnant so what he's going to do instead is he's going to come forward he takes this camp here oops we're looking from the dire side he takes that one extra camp and here comes quincy or Quint, here comes Quinn and the Rubik. The Rubik lifts him. He gets silenced by the Orchid. Now he can't do a lot. He's going to probably get hit with a Remnant. And I think he's going to go down here. No, the, the, yeah, the Remnant goes down and he gets hit and he goes down. So that one extra camp or that one extra wave that he farmed, which he thought about not farming. He walked back here and then he was like, you know what? I'm going to go forward and farm it. That wave was just a little too greedy. He had the option of leaving that wave and coming down through here or coming down here and teleporting back to the top camp, top wave and farming this instead. He was just, just the littlest bit too greedy. You can get away with that kind of stuff in probably like sub 5k games. But when you get to like 5.5 or 6k, that kind of stuff will get you punished a lot of the time. All right, this farm example, we're not looking at carries. We're looking at some of our supports. So we'll see this Windrunner push out one wave. And then we're going to actually watch the uh, Snapfire and the Triumph Protector going for it here. So this is actually pretty interesting. The actually Windrunner just pushed out the last wave. So we have our Snapfire down here and we have our Triumph Protector. And both of them want to accomplish the same job right now. And let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about what their job is. So. The carries are kind of uh the, the carries are up here right now the two objectives to be taken by quincy crew are the mid lane tier two and the top tier two those towers are both an issue so they want to take them down the way they're going to do that is terrorblade is probably going to send illusions to this wave maybe cut this wave but we're going to have kezu sort of defending right here mid we know that kezu is going to be defending mid so we don't really know where they're going to take a fight yet but what do these guys want to do they also want to control the lanes and keep them pushed because the last thing that quincy crew wants to do is have this lane get pushed up here this lane get pushed up here and have to slow down their push because somebody is split pushing them and forcing them to react uh down here so what owie 2000 is going to do the snapfire is going to be the same thing that treon protector is going to do he's literally just pushing the wave out with his 
nature's grasp notice that he doesn't even come in there to attack any of those units he doesn't want to show all he wants to do is force the wave to push forward and because snapfire shows here we're gonna see quinn who was also cutting a creep wave right now this is another way to get your wave to push forward so this is actually a really good secondary point uh as a core what you can do in the late game is cut the creep waves before uh, cut, cut the creep waves at they as they spawn and they spawn at the 30 second and one minute mark so quinn knows that he cuts the creep wave but now that he's seen the, the snapfire over he's like oh an opportunity so snapfire is going to kind of risk her life here to push out additional waves so we see snapfire come forward she wants to keep this wave pushed for at least one more so she's going to come in here cookie they're going to moonlight even but snapfire gets caught and snapfire goes down however this isn't a big loss for crazy this means that this wave gets to get pushed out they're able to keep uh, Faceless Void farming on the other side of the map. It opens up the map a little bit more for Void. It is literally the definition of space created. And it it's not it's not always awesome that you die, but sometimes it happens. You're going to die sometimes in the game. Snapfire was trying to ach achieve the objective of pushing the lane backwards. And now what, what's gonna, what, what the end result is, is that these two lanes are going to meet right here again after both lanes push out. And the creep equilibrium is going to be right here. Unless Quinn goes bottom and pushes it or the Treant continues to push it. Um, not sure which one's going to happen. I would assume that unless a team fight's breaking out or they're planning on team fighting soon, Treant's going to push one more wave bottom. But that's just the scenarios of, of you know, what could be. Well we're not going to watch the the whole game but we just wanted to point out um the little tick for tack we had between uh Trion protector and snapfire so our friendly neighborhood snapfire has respawned and our terror blade is doing exactly what terror blade should be doing cutting the creep waves with illusions so snapfire takes the illusion the tree is over here trying to set up a kill they still have this aegis so what's happening they are isolating the radiant side or the radiant squad basically relegating them to the back of their base they're not letting them get out here and take any farm so they're kind of abandoning this farm back here in favor of farming their side of the map and keeping pressure on the radiant team and we see snapfire again doing the exact same thing snapfire just did while trying to say, stay safe so she wants to push these waves as fast as possible get this wave out of here and, and not put herself in a position to die terror blade still has the aegis it hasn't been used in a long time the timer is going to expire in one minute so they've used this whole aegis basically to control the whole map and extend their lead and if we look at the net worth terror blade's doing really well void is kind of doing okay too and now this snapfire gets rotated on again in the exact same way we saw before but like i said this is space creation it gives void a little bit of space to get out on the map now obviously void's got to get out of here they have a deep a deep board i don't know if they're going to catch him let's see real quick i think void is probably just going to time walk and tp away no just going to tp away he's going to get away but it gives them a little bit more space on the map and this makes it what this does what snapfire just did was make it safe for void to come into his own jungle so it might look like this snapfire just fed two times in a row here but really what snapfire did was make space for this void to farm so pushing out waves really important as a support did a good job gave him a little bit of farm and i think the aegis is just about to expire yeah we'll see it expire in a second and this whole time this whole time they use this aegis literally as a farming aegis to completely isolate the radiant beautiful usage didn't want to take a stupid fight they didn't even get the tier two or the tier the tier two mid or the tier two top they just completely controlled the map the whole time and when this goes late game with the terry blade who has a bkb things are going to look nice yawar can now start taking more defensive farm if he needs to they can farm the top wave whatever it is but the next team fight that they take is going to be in their favor because a huge terror blade is just so freaking hard to deal with all right, what we're looking at here is a ranged core, our Drow Ranger, who happens to be farming a stack at the moment. So she started at the small camp. You can see that the mid wave, if we look on the mini map, is pushed in. So she has no mid wave to farm. She's going to farm the uh, the stack that was created for her, and then she's going to go ahead 
and take the ancient creeps and we like to see ancient creeps being farmed like this um especially by a uh, carry player if you can do it there aren't that many viable ranged cores however drow ranger is one of them she does also have multi-shot as a farming mechanism which is great as well and we will see here that what she's basically going to do is alternate between that jungle and the mid lane now while her team is pushing up here so we see that she that her team is all the way up here uh she is going to go ahead and come into the enemy jungle steal a little bit of their farm and then when it's time for their team to leave she's going to retreat back towards her ancient camp so we're just going to watch that farming pattern uh play out here takes one of the large camps and then doesn't really feel safe to stay here anymore doesn't want to push this top tower with the team because i don't think they can get it uh and then she's going to come back here use her multi-shot and then end up back in the jungle she does not want to be down here now we've seen this in uh in another example but she doesn't want to be down here because it is the dead lane so now we're going to look at our position is this our four yeah this is basically our position for farmer and that is the Triant Protector. Triant is going to go ahead. Uh, Triant is going to go ahead and push out the waves, uh, keeping the lane pressure up towards this tower because it makes this area of the map available for Drow or for somebody else if they want to go there. They can also make plays around the map, which they're doing right now. Um, if this lane was pushed all the way up to here, they wouldn't easily be able to make a play around the map. Somebody would have to react to that. Even though it's the tree right now, they can see him in lane. The three of these heroes are able to go gank pretty easily. So we're seeing a lot of good stuff happen, uh, happening here. We're seeing tree push the bottom lane. So you're seeing where tree is farming. He's taking the dead lane farm and we're seeing drow continuously go back and forth to these ancient camps while pushing out mid when mid is available to be pushed so i think she just pushed out mid one more time there and now heading right back to the ancient camps perfect farming pattern this is what you want to be doing as a core your idea is not to be a drow looking for this fight right now by the way you don't want to participate in this fight uh, because it probably won't net you an objective the way that you're going to get serious objectives is by getting serious items and this is your main concern as a carry is getting serious items oh drow is trying to do that all right in our last example here we'll talk about a few things so first and foremost i'm going to talk about terrorblade terrorblade is pushing out the elute or the wave top right now so what terrorblade is effectively doing is going to be to force somebody to react to this tower if they want to keep it alive we'll see that come into play later the other thing we want to make a note of is that this lane is also uh this there, there's also this lane equilibrium that has me been met down here bottom uh somebody at some point is going to want to push this up if they want to take this tier two tower they're probably not strong enough at this point which is the radiant squad to take more than one tower win a team fight and take more than one tower so let's watch this team fight play out and then see how people rotate around the map and exactly what happens. Notice that everybody has their teleportations available as well. I want to point that out. Actually, Keza doesn't have his yet, but that's okay. So we're going to watch the team fight play out here. We've got the roar. We've got multi-shot going off. Terrorblade uses metamorphosis. All of this is good and well. And unfortunately, the um, centaur and the ogre are dead at this point. The tower goes down. So now, how do we play this out? Top wave. This is the result of Terrorblade pushing this lane earlier. So what does this do? This forces a reaction from Team Crazy. This kind of stuff doesn't seem like it's that important, but it really, really is. And Bryle knows how important it is. So Bryle reacts up here to take care of this tower. Who else reacts on this map? Treon Protector. Treon wants to keep this lane push. Lane pressure is so important. Now, why is it not Beastmaster that reacts bottom? Why is it Treant? Because Beastmaster is more effective on this part of the map, uh, keeping, drow keeping Drow alive with the Hawk Vision, with the Boars, with the Dominated Creep. If anyone comes here, Beastmaster can be um, much more beneficial than Treant could at this point. And this is kind of what Treant does. Like our Beastmaster is not going to get a lot of farm in this dead in this dead lane. Kezu and 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 Drow can split farm if they go farming up, if they go up this way. Or Kezu could cut a creep wave. There's all kinds of stuff that could happen. But we're going to play this out a little bit, and we're going to see. Um, 
why does our drow not go top that was the other question i wanted to ask and you should be asking yourself questions like this when you're when you're analyzing replays or trying to get better you should watch someone and think 15 seconds from now if i was this player what would i do and if this player that you're watching is 7k and they do something different than what you would do ask yourself why am I wrong? Don't assume that you're right because the person's a 7k player. They probably have like 10,000 hours of Dota on you um, and they know something that you don't. Assume that you know something that assume that they know something you don't and ask yourself what it is that this player is doing right and what it is that you're doing wrong. 99% of the time they will be doing something right that you're doing wrong and maybe like one instance out of a thousand or a hundred they'll make like a, a mistake that you think that you'll be able to pick up on even like most of the time you won't be able to pick up on a mistake but drow with aegis is standing closer to the mid wave she's still presenting a threat and now while queen of pain comes up here to push this uh, pushes this lane forward and through here drow and beastmaster will meet them top and they'll put some pressure on this top tower will they be able to take it maybe it looks like the other team is pushing bottom and they they know that so they're going to be able to push this tower safely as well with drow and they get a two for one while keeping drow in the mid lane and not forcing a teleportation bottom lane because our triant has been pushing this wave the creep waves over here so they're not in danger of losing this tower at all and this has been a really good demonstration actually like all around of the of the crazy squad really maintaining their creep uh, their their lanes and their map pressure and, and pushing their adva advantage with the ages so you saw a lot of different people utilize really good farming patterns right there uh, and and that's uh i think that's a pretty good place to leave it off at thank you all for watching the video i hope these examples did portray to you something that you may not have known about farming patterns or where you should be on the map or why people go to certain places anyways uh let me know what you thought i'll see you guys next time one love